Hello everyone, in this video we're talking about 5 things I wish I knew when I started Stormworks. So you see this ship here? This took me a while to make, and obviously I didn't have the skills to make it right off the bat, but eventually I was able to get to a point where I could make stuff like this. And it was a long journey, like right now I have over 6,000 hours in Stormworks, and even still I don't understand everything in the game. For example, I haven't even touched steam engines and nuclear reactors. But that's okay because my niche and my kind of my enjoyment comes from making stuff like this. So with that said, we're going to go to point 1 on the list. The first item is taking the time to learn the intricacies and shortcuts of the workflow. The reason I'm saying that is because even to this day, I still am finding different keys and shortcuts and stuff that helps make building that much faster. Now, I didn't know this, but the Stormworks developers on their Discord have a list of all the shortcuts that the game uses, and I highly recommend you take a look at that. Um, like clicking X, you d delete things. If you press and hold control while cl clicking on things you kind of copy that item so stuff like that will just increase your speed and efficiency it's just like learning any software i mean coming from a structural engineering background there's tecla and different structural softwares that you have to learn the shortcuts otherwise you're stuck um and it's just not going to be efficient for you so that's one of the things and then intricacies like I was explaining in my beginner video, the different things that allow you efficiency in the workshop and things. So it's just taking the time to understand the interface that the Stormworks developers have given us in creating things. And with that, hopefully more efficient creations, better looking creations and all that stuff. The second item on my list is to try to focus on one segment at a time and learn the intricacies and workflow and how the creations work of that segment. So in front of you here, you see a bunch of trucks and an ATV. So all of them are four wheeled engined creations. With them came the understanding of mechanics like you see on this tow truck. Here you have a generator. Here you have these sort of pylons that you could use and deploy, but obviously it's not a technical thing. But with stuff like this came understanding, if we go to the workbench here, so all this components, whether the logic or the actual um, engine components, they were all part of one sort of workflow or one uh, big group of understanding. Then if you go to something like helicopters, with helicopters you get an entirely different set of inventory that you can implement obviously propellers still engines or battery powered but in an entirely different array we have the the gyros inside the helicopters all sorts of different sensors for keeping the stability for keeping the altitude like the altitude hold so you want to take the time to understand each of the segments before jumping to the next you it's easy to get overwhelmed it's easy to get scatterbrained like i said and um, in other videos and mentioned the um, I still don't know all the intricacies of the steam engines I still don't know how some of the stuff especially with um, the nuclear powered works but that's okay for me because my bread and butter comes from making stuff like this so that is something that that I actually thought about but at first when I first started I wanted to build everything I wanted to build a truck and I wanted to build a helicopter and I wanted to build a ship and a small boat and all sorts of different things and it, it became a little overwhelming and it can lead you down a road where you either give up or where you sort of decide that oh like I can't do anything so it's easier and nicer just to focus on one thing on one segment and master it or at least get it to a point where you're happy with where you are and then you could move on to the next The next item on my list is probably the most important, so if you don't listen to anything else in this video, listen to this. This is something that could have saved me a huge headache in, in the past, and I recommend everyone follows it. So, electric components, 
they're connected to things via these kind of nodes, I would recommend you always, always, always attach it either to a breaker or a relay or a bat or one battery, but even the battery I wouldn't recommend. So I would either use a breaker or a relay and make sure everything is connected to that. Obviously you could have a set of breakers or relays, um, you know, different electric components, whatever backup components, they have their own relay, that's fine, or their own breaker, but do this if nothing else. So for me, I always, and this is standard on all my creations, will make the electric A be the hot side, meaning it's always attached to battery, so it always has power. And then B is the side that I always make where you could disable it, and then it has no power. So it's just standard on all my creations, but you want to use these points, so right off the breaker, and connect to everything. So you see here, the hot side A is connected to the battery, it's connected to the generator, and it's connected to my electric connectors, whereas the B side is connected to the displays, the lights, the stuff that's not as important, or the stuff that you're gonna disable, but A is always gonna be hot. This was my first helicopter I ever made, and you have stuff like this. It looks like a spider web of things that attaches, and it kind of just goes off, and you have to trace the path. I will tell you, do not do this you are gonna mess everything up if you decide to let's say this pivot say i want to make a version that doesn't have the pivot instead it has a pivot up here so i delete it now i've isolated and removed all these things take a look at this if you go to the logic and you have the spider web system of things connecting to things this shit becomes super difficult to go through and when you if you, god forbid you delete this light or delete something that's connected on a path like this light here you now have to go and manually fix it take a look at my newer ships here everything stems out of the breakers so yeah it does look very intensive when you're looking at it and you see all these things but once you get a hang of it it's not that difficult you just don't have to go and fix every single node so again, uh, this is something that I learned the hard way, and that's why this platform, the Algory platform, is super easy to modify, because I can go ahead and delete this entire crane, for example, and yeah, all the nodes are going right to the breaker, so now they're gone, they don't change anything. Like, I delete this guy here, it's fine, all it is is no longer connected. I don't have to go and search the path and reconnect this light and reconnect this winch and stuff. Anyway, long story short, learn from my mistakes this is super important and it'll help you in the future and it'll help you to troubleshoot if you find you didn't give electric power to something it's much easier to connect it than to try to search the path because i've spent hours going through each path one by one when it was a spider web style and it was so annoying the next item on my list is use ChatGPT to your advantage to write Lua codes. Now, when I started Stromworks, ChatGPT was not a thing. In the recent days, it is. Um, now, this isn't university. You're not going to get a passing or failing grade by cheating and using ChatGPT. It's not how it works. But I think you could use it to your advantage to write codes. So I'm not from a coding background. I've taken it in one class, a C++ class at university but it's a different language. Everyone will tell you it's a different language than Lua, but it's similar enough when you understand the basics. You can understand how coding is written, but maybe you don't have that. So what you can do is you can actually go to the workshop and look at people's creations and reverse engineer them or understand how they wrote them, but you don't even have to do that anymore. Now you could just go to ChatGPT and have it write for you a code that you could then troubleshoot and you can learn by using ChatGPT. You can learn how to write in coding, and then you actually end up with a valuable life skill. You can end up getting a job as a programmer. All sorts of doors open up if you take it to the next level. That's what I love about Stromworks. It's not just a video game. You can actually develop real life skills. So ChatGPT is a great tool for starting off. If you're not a programmer like I'm not, you can use it to actually write codes for you or check your codes or troubleshoot. It's not always perfect, and you can't just go and tell it, write me a code that does whatever. It may have issues or struggle, but with some tweaking and going back and forth, you may be able to get it to that point. And I wish I knew that a while ago, when people were using ChatGPT, I was like, you know, I, I was hesitant and not doing it. 
but truthfully for this type of stuff it is a great great tool the last thing on my list is make a sheet of your important microcontrollers for putting them into vessels and what I mean by that is if you go right here where I have these two hatches right beneath this you have a massive room con containing all the codes or most of the codes that make this ship function and see here it says v7 so it's my v7 version so I would have to check this is a v1 version that I've edited and made this is v2 so v6 so all of them have different versions but at least then you have one place and I could just come here select this and obviously it's not as easy as this and it takes a little bit more time but you you can do it this way you then just copy this and place it into your new creation and then one by one have to reconnect all these nodes yeah it takes a lot of time I mean consider the amount of data going through this but at least it'll give you a starting point with where to where to begin instead of having to use your memory and try to remember the different codes and different sorry not codes the different microcontrollers that you used you can just pull it out of one creation and put it right into the next for this one it saved me a ton of time having this little room and I actually extracted this out of the RSV Algary and the RSV Avala which is a bigger ship and put this room together and now this room is my kind of go-to for placing it into new vessels that I make from here. Also make a system where you can track your revisions. If you're making your own microcontrollers especially like this one that I made myself here that's a huge one with a lot of data points. Make sure you label them nicely like this v7 here so when you go and search for it here you can find it quite easily and to be honest I should be better and kind of delete some of these old ones but you could see here v7 is my newest one so now I wouldn't have to worry about using an outdated controller because sometimes it could be a full-time job folks if you go and have to update all your old creations based on new ones like probably the Avala has maybe the v2 version and it, it works good enough obviously I made changes later on that got us to a point where we can now do way more things maybe it has position hold but for some of the older ships i just say whatever good enough we leave it as it is for some ships we fix and update if i have the time and then other ones we move forward and use the new creation but i do recommend you have one location or one place that has all your microcontrollers that you could easily copy into other vessels my first one i didn't do this the R rv alberta I had them scattered all over the place and it was very difficult to make my next creation after having that. And same thing with the sensors and relays, it's just so much easier when you put everything in one place. So give it a shot, if you're not already doing this, give it a shot, it will help you kind of moving forward and placing things into new creations. Because at the end of the day those are your microcontrollers and your next ship is likely going to have the same ones, maybe tweaked versions, maybe adjusted, but it will be more or less the same things now also one thing worth noting is I always try to make my microcontrollers have all these different settings right off the bat so you can actually just use the same microcontroller only make the adjustments so my anchor controller you set to whatever size the winch is it'll automatically know the length of that winch you set the distance between the seabed and the anchor and the time before the megal is toggled and boom you now have it so it's very like all these ones I put with different settings like right here that you could set so you'll notice that I try to do that not all of them obviously but a lot of them will have the settings where you can yourself input them instead of it going into the microcontroller and changing things so that's also useful to know now I will make a tutorial video on microcontrollers as a whole how to plan them how to develop them and make them but that was the last item for things I wish I knew when I started Stormworks. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, hopefully you learned something, and it'll benefit you in your creations. And as always, happy Stormworksing!